Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time. No worries. Thank you very much for going to see you. Have a nice day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Well, that was interesting. Great, so you want to know how to get cheap hard drives. Well, that's easy. There are two simple methods. Number one is shucking, and that's what we'll be talking about in this video, and it's mostly useful for large capacity hard drives. We're talking about four terabytes or more. Method number two is by harvesting old TiVo boxes, and I'll be covering that in a separate video coming out soon, so make sure you get subscribed for that. But that method is better for smaller capacity hard drives anyway, such as, you know, two terabytes or less. So what exactly is hard drive shucking? Well, the term actually comes from the kitchen. Shucking is actually the process of removing the shucks from maize or shellfish, but the term has been borrowed by IT professionals and used to describe the process of taking an external hard drive and dismantling it, exposing a standard internal hard drive inside, and then installing that hard drive inside of a desktop PC or server, as you would with a typical off-the-shelf hard drive solution. So why does the data hoarder community recommend shucking so much? Well, let's start by taking a look at the prices of large capacity internal hard drives. The cheapest large capacity hard drive is £73. It's a Seagate Barracuda 4TB drive. But let's say you want more, say 8TB. Now the cheapest drive is £140. Again, that's on sale. And that's a Seagate Barracuda drive too. So what about a 12TB drive like the drives that I keep in my NAS? Well, the cheapest 12TB internal hard drive is almost £300. Now that's an awful lot of money, especially if you're buying multiple at a time. So unless you're using the corporate credit card, you're going to want to make sure you're saving every penny you can. So then let's take a look at the prices of drives again, but this time for external hard drives rather than internal. For a 4TB drive, the price is absolutely identical, £73 for internal, £73 for external. But the internal drive is on sale here, so bear that in mind. At 8TB, an external drive is £129. That's £11 less than the internal alternative. And at 12 terabytes, the external drive is just £220, compared to 295 for the internal drive. That's a £75 saving, and it doesn't even account for the frequent sales of the 12 terabyte drives, where we can see them often drop to values of £180, making it a more than £100 saving. Taking this a step further, the website discprices.com is a fantastic resource for finding the best value for money hard drives. Let's take a look on there. And as we can see, almost all the best price per terabyte hard drives are external. So there is a clear and obvious trend that buying external hard drives is significantly cheaper than buying the internal counterparts. But here is the crazy part. If we go ahead and start taking apart one of these external drives, what do we find inside? That's right, a completely standard internal hard drive. And people who are much more knowledgeable than me have spent significant amount of time researching this, and they have all come to the same conclusion. The internal drives are of near enough exactly the same spec and quality of the external drives. So we can only draw one conclusion. Shucking is essentially just a free £100 discount code. Well, I'm not quite convinced it's that simple. So this is why I went out and spoke to Seagate directly. I wanted to find out why the prices for their internal drives are so much more than their external alternatives, despite the fact that external drives have significantly more material costs because of the additional enclosure, SATA to USB conversion PCBs, and also the power plugs they come with. And on top of all of that, the fact that they take up so much more warehouse space. So why on earth would they cost less? Well, let's jump on the phone with Seagate and see what they have to say about this. Hi there. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at some of your. Um, hey, hello. So I'm I'm just looking at some of your eight terabyte hard drives, um, and I I keep noticing that the external hard drives are much much cheaper than the internal hard drives. I was just wondering if you knew what the reason for that was. And I did. I wanted to know if there was like a, a physical difference, a performance difference, because in my head it makes more sense for the external to be more expensive. You know, you get the external enclosure, the extra wiring, you get all these extra things. Yet for some reason it's cheaper. And I, I just wanted to know what the reason for that was. I see. Um, uh, the uh, that depends also on what internal drive you buy and what external drive because with the external device unfortunately we cannot uh, uh, you cannot choose very spe many specifications like the RPM or um, 
the cache size, uh, which you can choose mainly for the internal disks. So it depends also on uh, which internal disk, what is the generation, uh, because maybe the external drive you're looking, it might be perhaps a, a standard model that might be slightly older. So I don't know, uh, where did you see that? Was it in uh, which reseller? Um, the drives? To be honest with you, it's across all resellers that I've looked at. So everywhere I've looked, um, the internal drives have been more expensive. And I'm only looking at the very basic, like the Barracuda compute drives, nothing nothing fancy. Um, but like I say, like even like the Barracuda compute, Barracuda Pro, everything is more expensive um, on the internal drive side of things. And every type of, like all of your different um, external hard drives seem to be much cheaper across all different sort of models and variations. I see. Uh, generally, it's, uh, from what I know, the Barracuda, the standard Barracuda, uh, with a, a standard uh, external disk, they should have the same price. Uh, however, if you show a different one, if you can give me the model number, I can check it. It might be faster RPM, it sure. might be bigger cache size. Okay. Um, and you have model numbers, so I can check. Oh, here we go. Yes, uh, I found or it. Or if you want. I, 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 I found it. Okay, great. So, the... Um, the number is STEL eight zero 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 two zero zero. That is the CK packet class uh, desktop. What uh, the what is the um, internal disk that uh, you saw? ST eight thousand DM zero zero four. And uh, again, I found it here. I see that's the Barracuda 3.5, 8 uh, terabytes. And uh, you mentioned that uh, you saw that this, uh, between the two resellers, this one is um, a, has a, a higher price, you mentioned. Yes, yeah. And you saw that across many resellers. Yes, yeah. I, did you check uh, from our uh, partners or was it the reseller, for example, like uh, eBay or a third party reseller? Which resellers? So this was, um, if you go on the Seagate website and it's got the list of uh, places you can purchase, it was from those, so like Scan, uh, eBuyer, uh, Amazon, those those stores. Okay, yes. Um, uh, from what I can see, they have a slightly um, similar internal disk. However, the Barracuda is um, is a, a newer generation. The other drive, it's a slightly older generation. Uh, so it might be the difference with the generation. Uh, however, for internal disks, uh, it's, a, it's a different thing because they also come with different specific firmware. Uh, so it might be that as well, uh, or it might be just a generation. However, with the uh, prices, uh, or it might be just a stock, as mentioned. Um, if, for example, it's a newer product, maybe they don't have enough stock, and perhaps that's why the price is uh, like that. Uh, but the prices, it's mainly determined by our distributors and resellers. I'm just telling you the two differences in the model and why that might be with the price. From what I know, they shouldn't have a huge difference in price, but if you see a small difference, that should be the reason. Sure. Internal drives generally have a slightly different prices because um, because it uh, targets a different market. Sure, so you're saying that they're more expensive just on the basis that they can be more expensive and they can sort of, in, in no bad way, but you can sort of get away with charging more, if that makes sense. Like, uh, it depends. It's not a bad thing. Maybe it's the just the internal drive that you buy. Yeah, because the internal drive that you buy, they are newer generations. Uh, however, I cannot tell you what generation of uh, drive the CG Backup Plus a uh, desktop or the external disks contain. Okay. Okay, that's good then. Okay, that yeah, I think that yeah. answers my questions. Okay. Yes, and also if you want to know about prices. Uh, or depending on the stock, you can check with the resellers because they can tell you more uh, regarding the prices. Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time. No worries. Thank you very much for going to see you. Have a nice day. Thank you. You too. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Well, that was interesting. Did you notice the very short bit there? 
where she just briefly mentioned that they were priced differently because they are targeted at different demographics. Because it's a targeted different market. Which is essentially saying that internal hard drives, they can get away with charging more because people are willing to pay it. Yeah, they're essentially saying that they can charge more for internal hard drives because people are willing to pay it. And if that's not a good reason to shuck your hard drives instead, then I don't know what is. Okay, so that was actually a pretty eye-opening conversation. Essentially, what it sounds like is that the Seagate rep didn't actually know or didn't really want to say why the pricing was different. There was indeed a lot of talk about firmware differences and the age of the devices, but the firmware shouldn't have that much of an impact, and the age is certainly no factor either, considering that when we shuck the drives, we can see the manufacture date of the drives inside, and they are all manufactured recently, within less than a year. The only real answer here is that pricing is different, because the market for external drives is different to that of internal drives. So I suppose that leaves us with one easy conclusion. Don't waste your money on internal drives, Pump it into external drives instead, and spend 10 minutes disassembling and pocket the savings for another expense. But before we set this to rest once and for all, what are the disadvantages to shucking? Well, they are definitely worth considering, because shucking could actually render your warranty void, though there is no official confirmation on this. However, it's certainly a grey area. Some users have reported having luck reassembling their drives and sending them in for RMA that way, and others have even suggested that they have had successful RMAs by just sending the internal drive without the external casing. On top of this, some drives will require you to blank out the third pin on the SATA power connector. Without doing so, the hard drive will not turn on even when all the cables are connected. However, all it takes to overcome this is a thin strip of electrical tape, and that's it, you've finished the mod. Just put it on the power connector and you're done. It's easy to reverse and simple to implement, taking only just a few seconds. And as far as I'm concerned, those are all the drawbacks. And it's well worth the savings you can see from going for an external drive because the price saving is so significant. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I source my hard drives so cheaply. It's an easy process that can save you vast amounts of money, especially if you're buying multiple. So take this advice, go forth and save money. And if you did enjoy this video, then be sure to leave a like and hit subscribe. If you ever shuck to drive or just have an interest, leave a comment down below letting me know what you use your high capacity drives for. Photos? Videos? Plex? Games? Let me know down below.